This was supposed to be one of the most magical first date plans that I've ever heard. It was like the kind of first date that you tell your grandchildren about. Like we were gonna go on a rooftop and we we're gonna look at a meteor shower that only comes around like once every few decades and he was gonna serenade me with his ukulele. This was so great that I didn't even care that I met him online. When we talked online, you know, like he could type sentences and then he like immediately asked me out. And I was like, oh, okay, this could be going out very well. As I was getting ready, uh, I told my friends about this. I'm like, yeah, we're meeting at 11.30 p.m. <laughs> in a secluded area in the city. <laughs> and as I'm saying these words out loud, I'm thinking this is the great plot for a serial killer. <laughs> so I immediately take out my phone and I'm like, okay, uh, I tell my friend, okay, here is his name, his picture, his number, my last wishes. <laughs> I'll give you updates throughout the date. Uh, but like on the off chance that this is really great, like this could be a very, very magical first date. So I'm like, okay, I'm still gonna go through it, I'm still gonna go. So I get ready and I meet him at the metro stop that we decided. I'm standing there and then all of a sudden I hear this very deep, slow voice behind me that says, hello. And I turn around and there's a man there wearing a white dress shirt, short sleeve, with a black tie, khaki shorts, and dress shoes. He looked like a Mormon schoolboy trying to spread the good gospel to me. Which is fine if you're into that, <laughs> but I'm not. But I wanted to keep an open mind and I said, okay, this is fine. Uh, I asked him like, oh, uh, did you just come from somewhere else? <laughs> I came from home. Oh, uh, do you live close by? Close enough. Okay, well, where should we go to go see the meteor shower? Follow me. <laughs> and then I follow him, and while we're walking, I'm like, so you're not a serial killer, are you? <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> he takes me to this area where there's a fence, and it says construction zone, do not trespass and then there's a broken building behind it and he starts climbing the fence and he's like, let's go. And I'm like, I, um, in my head, uh, I do not want to be caught with him for the first time I ever get arrested by the police. So I said, actually, I'm not really that comfortable with this. Why don't we go to the National Mall? There's a big open space there. Are there lights? Oh, you know, this meteor shower, it comes around like every couple decades, pretty common. Who cares if there's a little light pollution? Let's go. So he calls a lift and as we're waiting for the lift, he says, close your eyes and hold out your hands. I have a surprise for you. And I was like, uh, you know, I think I'm, I don't like surprises. <laughs> I'm okay right here as I slowly step back and thankfully the lift comes by and we get in and it's just very silent in the car all the way to the National Mall. I knew we weren't gonna see a meteor shower by this point, I just wanted to be closer to home. <laughs> and finally the silence breaks when the lift driver says, uh, where do you guys wanna get dropped off at? And Mormon schoolboy over here says, somewhere dark and secluded. <laughs> so we can do dirty things to each other. I immediately said, nope, nope, right here is good. We are getting out here. This date was probably 30 minutes in and I knew I wanted to get out. And I said, I really have to go to the bathroom. So why don't we go over here where there are buildings and lights and witnesses. But me being the person that I am, uh, he says, there's a Marriott. And I said, uh, but we're not guests at the Marriott. <laughs> like, will they let us in? Hold my hand and act like we'll t we're, we're together. And I was like, I really had to go to the bathroom. So I was like, okay. So I hold his hand and we go inside. 
And I felt like such a goof because I look around and no one's paying attention to us. And he finally had one victory throughout the night. Uh, but I leave him there on the couch outside of the bathroom and I go inside and I'm just like, I can't do this. I go to the bathroom and I'm like, I need to get out of this. So I pull out my phone and the entire time I'm like texting my friend, like we're at the National Mall now, now I'm in the Marriott. And I text her and I'm like, this guy is really creepy. I'm going to bail. And then I press send, uh, but I sent it to him. <laughs> instead of my friend. I have never done something like this before. And I was just shell-shocked where I'm looking around. There are no windows in the bathroom I can leave. There's only one door that I came in that I have to go out. And I thought, well, you know what? He knew this date wasn't going well. I'm sure if I'm just honest with him, it will be OK. So I go outside, and he's sitting there on the couch, and I said, so I just sent you a text message. And he looks up and he gives him this smirk that actually makes him look the most normal he's looked all night. And he holds up his phone and says, I know, I read it. Uh, so I meant everything that I said in it, but I didn't want it to come off that way. Like, I am not a mean person. I just want you to know that I am so sorry. And he goes, it's fine. This doesn't surprise me at all. This has just been a really hard year for me. Nothing's going well. I'll never find anyone. And I've never been to a therapist before. So I just guessed what a therapist would do in that uh, specific moment. So I lied. And I said, oh, don't worry, you'll find someone. It's not me, but you'll find someone. Like, I just got out of a long relationship, and look at me now, I'm back out there. You'll be fine. just want to let you know, though, I'm not a mean person. I am so sorry this happened. Uh, I hope everything goes well. I don't know what else I can say right now to dig myself out of this hole. So I'm just going to leave. <laughs> And then I slowly walked away as he was sitting there on the couch. And the only thing, I just felt this big wave of relief over me. Uh, and then I had this lingering thought in my head that, huh, now I do have a story to tell my grandchildren. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm.